will be Animal Haven, based in St. James. This is Amari. She's a beautiful dog. She might be missing a leg, but she's beautiful as you can see. She was found on an absolutely pouring rainy day in Fairview in Mo Bay. I took a different road because of the traffic, so I went down past the, the, the what's it, the hospital now, G West, and she was sat in the middle of the road, skin and bone. Our news team was at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay as the dogs were loaded onto their flight. The animals did not need a visa, but a lot of other documentation had to be done before they could travel. They have to be parasite free, so they have to be thoroughly wormed. No fleas, no ticks, nothing contagious on them. They have to be good body weight, they have to be healthy. Uh, so once our vets have given the dogs a health certificate, weighed them, aged them, because we don't know the age of some of these dogs. We get their certificate done and then the certificate and the dog is then taken to the government vet and she has to give it a very, very thorough examination to make sure that she agrees with everything that's been written down by our vets. And then if that is the case, uh, we're given clearance to send the dog. There was a lot of hugging and kissing. Saying goodbye was not easy for some of the dog's long-time caregivers. Removing these dogs and other suffering animals from the streets of Jamaica carry economic benefits as animal-loving tourists who come to Jamaica and see the maimed or dead dogs on the country's streets are turned off from visiting again. Now these pictures and videos were shared with us of some of the animals in their new homes in Canada, some already enjoying walks with their new owners. This one has been outfitted in a little dog jacket to help brave the freezing temperatures. The animals were sent to Canada thanks to a partnership with Save Our Scruff, which is a non-profit dog rescue charity located in Toronto and southern Ontario. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. The health ministry has confirmed there have been mishaps which have led to some vaccines going to waste. The revelation was made at a joint select committee of parliament on the COVID-19 pandemic. Not many vaccines to go by, and so every dose counts, which leaves little room for waste. The Ministry of Health is getting set to launch a web portal for the registration and scheduling of appointments, but only prioritized groups will be considered for the vaccine. Because of our scarcity, each appointment is linked to a dose. So if the dose disappears, the appointment disappears. The permanent secretary explained that currently there are 64,000 guaranteed vaccines. If a vial drops and breaks, you know, each vial contains approximately 10 doses. So we are taking every effort, are making every effort to protect the vials. But if any human error should creep in and one of those vials break, then we have, we, even if we have made the appointment, at the, point of the appoint, at the point of the appointment, we wouldn't have the vial. So that is why we have to put in the control mechanism. But as it turns out, human error has been in play. We have two reports of wastage. One is for eight doses that fell from a table in the West, and the other, yes, it, the table collapsed and the, the vial broke. It had eight doses in it. And there is another report of six doses. It was being held in someone's hand and it slipped out. So we have eight and six are the ones that I have received reports for as being wasted doses. The committee was told that an audit is underway to look into how the doses have been used, but there are concerns about the impact of what's been wasted thus far on the overall national vaccine program. This assurance from health officials. We should also bear in mind the fact that in the vials that we have been opening, we are noticing that we're getting 11 and 12 full doses out of the vials. So we have been vaccinating more than 10 persons. So that kind of compensate for the loss that we have uh, seen. As at March 15, 14,650 people have been vaccinated.
Welcome back to Primetime News and a special welcome once again to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, over 14,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine procured under the COVAX facility arrived in the island today. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton and representatives of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, were at the Norman Manley International Airport this afternoon for the arrival. Our reporter Vashon Brown was also there and now joins us live. Vashon? Thank you so much, Janella. Well, the plane with the 14,400 doses of the COVID-19 vaccines arrived at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston sometime after 4 p.m. today. Now, this comes exactly one week after Jamaica received 50,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine as a gift from India. Now, the PAHO WHO representative to Jamaica says this is the first phase of delivery. Vaccines are expected to arrive successively during 2021. According to the first round of COVAX allocations, Jamaica is continued, expected to continue receiving doses through May until it reaches 124,800 doses, the amount specified by COVAX. Now, the health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, says it is important to note that Jamaica is the first Caribbean country to receive vaccines under the COVAX facility. And I know there's been a lot of talk about whether Jamaica is behind the line. Uh, why is it that we are so far behind? Well, if we want to put it in terms of first, here is a first that I think we all should be proud of and happy for. But more importantly, it does speak to the, import, the challenges of vaccines, of vaccine availability to solving the global pandemic that we face. In the meantime, Dr. Tufton says the residents of infirmaries as well as the people who care for them will be added to the priority groups to receive the vaccines this week and others will also be on that list. During the course of this week, adding to those lists, parliamentarians who are 60 and over and so you will see sometime this week parliamentarians who are 60 and over the rationale again behind that is that we need our leaders at the level of the communities to provide leadership without the risk of exposure to the virus and uh, they represent by virtue of age also a vulnerable group. That will eventually graduate into the 60 and over um, among the general population. So during the course of this week, we will see more groups being added. So that brings us to another question that continues to be asked. When will the Prime Minister and the Health Minister take the vaccine? Dr. Tufton says they will take the vaccine sometime in April. I do appreciate the rationale behind us taking the vaccines early, and that is a demonstration effect as leaders. Um, and as I said earlier, there was an issue initially around whether or not parliamentarians, leaders should take the vaccine first in the context of a scarce commodity, numbers are small, or we should go for those who are more vulnerable, starting with our healthcare workers, or over 60s and others. And, you know, in some cases, it became almost controversial. And I would determine a distraction from what would be a more important issue of focusing attention around taking up the vaccines. We still have vaccine hesitancy as a big issue. So the matter was discussed, and we decided that we would wait a bit. Up first this evening, the Western Regional Health Authority is to receive a report in the next two days on the disappearance of 10 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine from the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. The report is expected to contain the findings from the internal auditor who is leading the investigation. Chairman of the Western Regional Health Authority made the revelation today on Power 106's morning agenda. Anthony Lug reports. Where is the missing vial? A question many have been asking since news broke that a vial containing 10 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine went missing from the Cornwall Regional Hospital on Monday night. 
The incident forced the Western Regional Health Authority to send in its internal auditors to ascertain how the vial went missing. This has led to questions about whether the vial was stolen or misplaced. Director of the Western Regional Health Authority, Errol Green, responded to the issue. There's a possibility that it could be misplaced. There's a possibility that it could, it could drop and break. But if the scenario was the latter, meaning drop and, and, um, and break, then obviously there are protocols that deal with that as well. Because we have even asked for photographs to be taken of the broken vials in the event that that happened. But there's a, there's a possibility as well that it could be misplaced. The, the vials are very small, so I'm not ruling out anything at this point. But one would have thought that identifying how the vial went missing would be an easy process, especially since the hospital is equipped with CCTV cameras. So, how long will the country have to wait to hear the findings of the audit? The process is being audited by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and I've asked the internal auditor at the Western Regional Health Authority to conduct an investigation and provide a report as soon as possible. You say as soon as possible, but yes. do you have a, a, a time frame in mind when you should receive a report? Certainly within the next 48 hours, I would expect. It mm -hmm. depends on who she have to talk to, to what you have to look at and so on. TVJ News has learned that six workers have been reassigned stemming from the incident. It's not clear how this will impact the administering of the vaccines in the region. Mr. Green says it shouldn't. Well, we have other individuals. Remember, no, we just don't employ persons to administer the vaccine. These are persons who would have been very experienced, who have worked in other areas and are working in other areas within the region. Yeah. You know, so we can always stand persons to um, reassign the duties to. Anthony Lug. TVJ News. A Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Horace Chang, says the island's public hospitals should see an ease in the shortage of medical oxygen this week. His response comes as hospitals are now scra scrapping to get by as the shortage worsens. Anthony Log reports. Hospitals island-wide have been grappling with a shortage of medical oxygen as a result of the increased demand from the spike in the number of COVID-19 hospitalizations. Director of the Western Regional Health Authority, Errol Green, says the Cornwall Regional Hospital has been severely impacted. The situation in Sablamar, which is one of our bigger hospitals, have been getting reports over the past few days, getting reports up to Sunday evening that they were almost out. They would have been out, all things being equal by Sunday evening. The situation is worrying. We're appealing to IGL to see what can be done to improve the situation in the western region because we are, we are, we are desperate now. On the other side of the island, Chairman of the Southeast Regional Health Authority, Wentworth Charles, said the Kingston Public Hospital, Spanish Town, Princess Margaret and Linstead Hospitals are also grappling with the shortage. We are seeing a demand now of anywhere between four to five hundred percent demand in the institution. And we are for cases like Spanish Town where we would have supply once per day. We now require two or three times supply per day. And certainly throughout the region, we are having this increased demand that has placed a heavy strain on the institution. But on Monday morning, news came that the facilities could be seeing a relief in a matter of days. Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Horace Chang spoke with journalists after receiving his first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine in St. James. We should see some relief there. It is a major problem. They have not had this demand on cylinders for a long time. But the company is functioning well. They are working smoothly. Just the shortest cylinders. And it had to do with shipment disruption coming from the Far East because of COVID-19. But it's, you can't assure the nation they're getting relief this week. Hospitals will now have to wait days, but every second without sufficient oxygen at these facilities could mean life or death. But how could the government have allowed the hospitals to be in such a crisis, especially when the health ministry disclosed months ago that the spike in COVID-19 cases could result in pressure being placed on the healthcare system? Dr. Chang argues that the shipment had been delayed. They had a challenge and uh, in terms of having cylinders. They're, the factory is producing and therefore they could provide the, the, the hospitals for the pipe supply of oxygen, but they have short, have short cylinders. 
which um, were delayed because of COVID. They have ordered from early last year when they heard the disease was spreading and they ordered to get delayed, but they got us supplies just yesterday, they cleared. So as healthcare workers strive to give patients the best care, they, like many other Jamaicans, are hoping that the facilities will be equipped with the tools necessary to do so. Anthony Lug, TVJ News. And Dr. Chang disclosed that there are currently more than 300 active COVID-19 cases in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Dr. Chang linked the high number of cases to community spread of the virus. Yeah, we have had significant impact. The police, the last time I checked, we had well over 200 positive and you know, active cases. We've been going around. They're, they're part of the population. The police, in particular, work within the communities. And once you get the community spread, police officers are going to be affected. Um, the Army has had a few, but not as extensive at this point. But bear in mind, the Army also is on the road supporting the police.